So how do you prepare for your hospital stay? I mean, everybody tells you you need to have a um, hospital bag ready and you know you may or may not really have it ready depending on how much sooner you go than you think you're gonna go but for me um, what I wanted in that hospital bag was really this stuff that was going to make me feel more like a person and less like a patient when I was there because remember you know for most of us we go to the hospital to have a baby we're not feeling sick we want a pleasant experience we you know we want the and most of what I'm going to talk about is sort of after the actual birth of the baby because before the birth of the baby you're going to do you know you're going to have planned whatever is good for you. Um, after the birth of this baby, you want to feel like you are a person again. You know, you're going to take pictures. You want um, really comfortable PJs. I will say that you are going to have to get checked a lot while you're at the hospital. And so I wore um, like a nightgown actually, and it was really helpful because it was something I didn't have to take off when nurses would come and check me, but I also didn't have to wear a hospital gown. And I just made sure that it was something that was um, stretchy and flexible at the top or a button down one would be great so that you can nurse the baby and you just, you really don't have to change at all. <laughs> um, bring a pillow if you feel strongly that you can't sleep with someone else's pillow um, and it's more comfortable for you. Slippers or socks or those comfy socks that are really thick and, and fun to wear in the winter time. Um, bring anything that's going to make you feel more like yourself. So, you know, honestly, I brought a hairdryer every time I delivered and the morning after I always took a shower and blow dried my hair. And some people will say like, really, you blow dried your hair, you're in the hospital having a baby. And that's what made me feel more like me. And I needed that because otherwise, you know, you feel like you're in the hospital. <laughs> and, and that's, this is a very happy occasion, the happiest occasion you're going to experience in your life. So you should feel good about yourself. And you, I, you know, I don't wear makeup on an everyday basis. I'm not wearing any makeup right now, but I wear makeup when I, you know, after I delivered my kids and it was fine. I always made sure I got a manicure and pedicure that, you know, if I could the week before. And, and those are things that make me feel good and make me feel more put together. And, and like, I really want like my best self, I would say, right? Um, I, you know, certainly you want to bring your phone charger and all that, especially these days, you're going to be probably texting like crazy and posting things on social media. But um, food is one of those really important things to me. I, I love food. And I felt like every time I went in, you know, you go in to have a baby, you may not know this, but when you go in to have a baby, often they don't really let you eat much because they're worried in the event that you're going to need to go through a c-section or in the event that they're going to need to do something that would be better if you didn't eat they don't really let you eat once you show up so i um i always made sure to have my list of things that i want my my husband to bring to me after the baby is born and it was usually something that i couldn't eat during my pregnancy so i remember the first pregnancy, I had my husband bring me a turkey sandwich. Um, I didn't eat cold cuts during my pregnancies and I was really craving one for some reason. And my second pregnancy, I had him bring me sushi. So things that I didn't really eat during the pregnancy that I wanted really badly. And that would be my first meal after because you know what, I didn't want to eat hospital food and it's okay if that's how you feel, right? Um, and then music and thing, anything that really makes you feel comfortable, something obviously to wear home. If you want to do a photo shoot or something in the hospital, you know, I tended to take, to do those like bigger photo shoots at home after I got back. But of course you're going to take pictures. If you want to be wearing something specific, bring it with you. And so, for the baby. Oh yeah, go ahead. I was just going to touch on like for yourself. Um, I did a lot of the things that that you're saying too and i obviously learned with each baby um but you know taking a shower while you're at the hospital like taking your time because the nurses are there to take care of the baby like you may not get a shower in for the next couple of days you know like when you get home you may not have the time to to blow dry your hair when you get home so take advantage of that time when you're in the hospital and then also with the snacks um i 
I was so hungry. Like you don't even realize how hungry you get when you start to breastfeed. And so like, that's one of the things that, um, I had like thought about with each pregnancy. And every time that I went in, there was just packing just gobs of snacks. And I, I did the same thing. I was like, told my family exactly what I wanted for them to bring to me that I was craving that day. And I'm just, you're basically eating nonstop when you start breastfeeding because you are just so hungry. So bring those snacks in if you don't want to stick to the applesauce and graham crackers and whatever it is that they give you at the, at the hospital. And the, yeah. the DVDs and music, um, especially if you've got a longer labor, or you're being induced and you're just going to be sitting around and stuff like, I mean, I personally brought in like the Friends DVDs and just had that rolling on the TV in the background because it was something familiar. I didn't necessarily, you know, watch it, but it was just nice to have that in the background and, and kind of take my mind off of things sometimes. So you get extremely emotional also before, right before you have the baby. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great advice. And then, um, you know, the baby's going to need things too. And this is sort of a new, really new territory for you. You're not used to necessarily packing for another um, little person. And so um, you will take lots of pictures during your hospital stay of this baby, right? So obviously the baby's going to have a million pictures taken in the first couple of days. You will also likely have a professional photographer come and offer to take pictures of your baby you know, definitely have things that you want the baby wearing. I wouldn't go crazy. You really don't need more than one or two outfits. And one of those outfits can be the baby's going home outfit. Um, you know, just really things that are easy to put on and off. Um, you're, you're really just getting used to taking things off to change a diaper and doing all those things. So keep it simple. Um, and remember, you're going to have these pictures forever. So whatever you want them to be wearing, um, just put it in the bag. Um, I think that some sort of a nursing pillow is helpful. Um, you certainly can use the pillows that are in the hospital. You don't have to feel like you have to pack all this stuff if you don't, if you're not sure. Um, you can use a boppy. I liked the breast friend too. That was a good one. Um, and it, they do help. Um, the blanket and a baby cap, they will give you a cap probably at the hospital. Um, but if you want like a softer blanket, something a little bit more um, cozy, then I would definitely bring one of those. Um, burp cloths, um, they also have those at the hospital and it's totally fine to use them. Um, it really depends on you and what your comfort level is. Um, and some hospitals, I know we talked about this, Kim, that it, by you, the hospitals still are providing pacifiers. A lot of the hospitals by us have gone what they call baby friendly. Um, and in order to have a baby friendly certification, you can't provide um, pacifiers to newborns. Um, and the idea behind the baby friendly certification is that to be breastfeeding friendly. Um, and to be quite honest, I mean, I'm obviously very pro breastfeeding. I um, am a certified lactation consultant and um, there are not great studies to show that pacifier use really affects breastfeeding. Bottle use, absolutely. So if it's something important to you, I mean, certainly you can deal with a few days without a pacifier if your baby, if you just want to put the baby to breast every time they're fussy, which is what I would recommend. But if a pacifier is something that's important for you to have, just stick one in the bag just in case you will need it. Um, and, and to go along the lines of like new rules at hospitals, I know like going through the birth of three children, the, the whole baby cap thing has changed in the past like 10 years. Like you're supposed to keep a cap on their head and then you're not supposed to, and then you are supposed to. So what, what are the, the guidelines nowadays? So I usually recommend keeping it on in the hospital. Um, and then, I mean, it depends on when you, you deliver really, but um, if it's really warm out and you're leaving, you don't need it. Um, if it's winter time, of course, you know, you want to dress your baby like you're dressed yourself. And, you know, the head is where the baby's going to lose the most heat, which is why they do keep it on in the hospital. I mean, 
it's nothing you need to be overly concerned about if it comes off i'm sure your baby will be fine um so just you know try to remember that these things are guidelines and they're suggestions and not to um feel anxious if something isn't exactly the way we're talking about um and then one more question that has come in um so somebody has said, um, I heard you can get extremely constipated in, when you go into labor and, and after birth. What can I do to avoid that? So in the hospital, I know that for my deliveries, they usually gave me, um, you know, after the fact, they would give you colace and they would give you, um, you know, Tylenol and Motrin for pain control. Um, but I, I think the best thing you could do to combat um, constipation ahead of time is to really like the weeks before and really the whole pregnancy is good to do it but i would try to eat a high fiber but high um water like diet so you know i eat like that in my day-to-day -day now i eat a very high fiber diet i don't eat a high carb diet but most of my carbs are high fiber carbs and i make sure that i'm I'm coupling that with very um, large quantities of liquids, right? Because if you're eating a high fiber diet and you're not drinking enough water, you will be more constipated, right? And so um, that's what I would say, you know, even leading up to delivery to just increase the fiber in your diet and then make sure you're adding extra cups of water in there as well. So I don't know about you, but like the prenatal vitamins, they, me personally would, um, because there's so much iron in them, would make me very backed up. So I would actually take a stool softener. Um, if it wasn't every day, it was every other day when I remembered um, pretty much throughout my entire pregnancy. So that would, that helped me stay regular. And that was, you know, the first thing that I would ask for when I get, got to the hospital because um, I definitely battled with that problem. Right. On the flip side, I have another question that came in that um, says that I heard that moms sometimes poop while they're in labor. Can't <laughs> avoid that in any way. Unfortunately not. It was actually a big fear of mine. Um, and I don't know why. And I, I think I even said to my husband, like, if it happens, I just don't want to know. <laughs> um, but, you know, the truth is you're, when you're pushing, you might, have a bowel movement. I mean, I think some of it depends on um, when you've eaten and what your regular um, GI tract cycle is like. Um, but the, I think the most important thing to remember is that that is such a common and normal thing. It is not dangerous for the baby in any way, shape, or form. Actually, some people think it's actually healthier for the baby. Um, and I would not be embarrassed about it because no one that is in the room with you, except you and maybe your spouse, um, has not seen it before. <laughs> um, and so I think that is something that you just need to remember that it is a completely normal and probably way more common than you think. Um, Thing for that to occur and so many so many moms go through it and they may not even tell you if, if it happened to you I think that's good advice